Okay, in this video I'm going to go through an example, and it's actually the same example that's in the text. That's example 4.3.3 on computing a least squares regression line. Now in the text I follow the formulas, which are rather messy, but they can be done without, um, without more than just a little desktop calculator. But here I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha to compute the regression line. Okay, so I've got five data points here. Um, and the independent variable, that's the x value, that's listed as the miles per gallon fuel efficiency of the car, and that's the city fuel efficiency. And then the dependent variable, the y value, that is the weight of the car. And intuitively, there should be a relationship. In general, it tends to be that heavier cars get less, um, get a worse fuel efficiency so that the miles per gallon would actually be lower. So it seems like there should be a negative relationship between these two. Okay, so to use Wolfram Alpha to do this, I've actually already um, typed in the data and I'm just going to type linear fit and I just pasted this from when I previously typed it in and then we put in our five points and now you won't have to watch me enter in those five points. So just linear fit in those five points and now I'm going to press enter Ignore that keyboard. <laughs> That's um, something that has to do with my pen pad that I use to write on Microsoft Paint for these videos. And we see that indeed there does seem to be a downward relationship that if I decrease, or excuse me, if I increase the fuel efficiency of the car, then the weight tends to go down. Okay, And it gives me this least squares line of best fit, and it also um, also gives me a approximate formula for that line. So we got 5997.38. Let me copy that down here. So that's y is about 5997.38 and then I remember at a negative slope 136.433 136.433 Okay, so there's my least squares regression line. Now, if I want to know uh, what the predicted weight of a car that gets 20 miles per gallon in, I was actually plug in 20. So y of 20, if we think of y as a function, use function notation here, it's approximately, and I'll pull up my Windows calculator to figure out what it is. I uh, get 136.433 times 20. And we get about 3,268.72 pounds. 3,000, and I gotta make sure I don't transpose digits here. 268.72 pounds. Okay. Now, the point I want to make by going into the next example, and in the text I do two examples, 4.3.3 and 4.3.4, is that if you switch the roles of the dependent and independent variables, you will get a different least squares regression line. Okay, so let me do that, and I'll actually use a different color. I'll use red for when I switch. So if I go into Wolfram Alpha, and what I want to do is I'm still going to do a linear fit, but I want to change the order of these variables so that so that my old x values are now my new y values and vice versa. Press enter and then I'll give you my new line of best fit. <laughs> Now when it gives me this new line of best fit, remember the X and Y got switched. So when it writes X here, that was actually the old Y. So when I write it down on my blackboard, I'm going to write it down as Y. X equals, and then this expression with this replaced with Y. So I got 41.5588. And X is approximately all right, minus 0 0.006556678. 0 0.006556678. Let me go back and check, make sure that's what it was. Yeah, times y. 
Remember, we switched the roles of x and y, so that's why I put a y here instead of an x. Now to compare these two lines to see if they really are the same line or if they're different lines, I'd want to get them into the same form. So I could either solve this one for x or solve this one for y. Since we usually think of y as being the dependent variable, I'll go ahead and solve this one for y. So I get x minus 41.5588 is approximately negative 0.006565. 5, 6, 7, 8. And notice I'm going out to a lot of decimal places here. <laughs> That's because I want, I want you to be convinced that this difference is not due to rounding. And it really is not. There's a little bit of, a, of the differences due to rounding, but not much. Okay, so that's negative 1 over, I'm going to divide both sides by this decimal. And I'm going to use the dis, um, distributive property to divide in each term rather than dividing the difference. Okay, and then on the right side I'll just end up with y. Okay, so if we write it more traditionally where y is on the left, we get y is about, and let's see if I scroll up, which one did I put first? I put the constant first. So first I'm going to take this 4.55 etc divided by the decimal. I have 4.5588 divided by 0 0.006556678. Can we get about 695.2803? 695.2803. And I had a negative divided by a negative, so that gives me positive. This next one is going to be negative, however, because that negative sign here. And let's see, I have 1 divided by 0 0.00655678. And that gives me about, let's say, 152.5139. 152.5139x. So, if I compare these two, let me actually bring this one down here, copy it, and then paste it. We see that they really are different lines. Okay, that they really are different lines. So for example, when I plugged 20 pounds into this first line, I got an estimate about 3268.72. What happens if I plug 20 into the second formula? So let's First of all, let's write that over there. So I got, actually I guess I can do this copy and paste trick again. Didn't have enough, actually, I'll just move this over and I'll lose a little bit of the tail of the Y, but that's not a big deal. Whoops, don't wanna do that so that I have room for this guy. And now, what happens if I plug 20 into this for me? Now this is a little bit different than what I did in, in the text. What I did in the text was I went ahead and I plugged something in for Y. And that was this 3268. There's 3269 if you're under the nearest unit. But here I'm gonna really try to compare apples to apples more and plug 20 into that. So if I plug 20 into that, I get 695, 0.2803 minus 152.5139 times 20. And the result, oh, I did some kind of typo there. I think I probably got this one wrong. I think I probably got this one wrong. So let's see, I'm gonna go recalculate this. I'm gonna skip it out of the video so you won't see it happening, but I'll, whenever you see me come back in a second, I'll have this number fixed. Ah, I found the issue. The issue is I dropped a one. Boy, I am bad at making typos in these linear least squares of videos. Okay, so I missed that one. I'm sure you knew that when you were following along here. And I got, let's see, 41.5588 divided by 0 0.00655678. I'm getting, I've typed these in so many times that I'm getting good at it. All right, and we get 6338.2941. 
I'm not going to be able to remember that, but I'll try to remember the 63. Whoops. 38. Let's erase this here. 63.38.2941. Okay, and what happens if I plug in 20 into there? I get 63.38. Point two nine four one minus one fifty two point five one three nine times twenty and we should end up with something close. And we really do thirty two eighty eight. But that's twenty pounds more. So we end up with thirty two eighty eight point uh we'll say zero two. Thirty two eighty eight point zero two. These two are different. It's not a great big difference, but it, it is a bigger difference. At least it's, it probably looks a little bit bigger to you than when I plugged this back in for Y and solved for X. Percentage-wise, it's not that much different. Uh, it's a little bit more that's a little bit more than half a percent difference and that's really all I have here too but when you write the equation for the lines in equivalent forms that's when you really do see that these two lines are different now why did it give me a different line well I'm going to talk about the theory of least squares how that least squares line arrives and then that'll um, that'll give us some insight into where it came from um, I guess I can be color coordinated, so I'll use white data points. And heck, why not go ahead and make white axes here? Let's see, since we have a negative slope in this example, I'll have my um, line have a negative slope. When I do normal least squares regression, what happens is I go ahead and I draw that line and the line is drawn so that these vertical distances, vertical distances, not just distances, but vertical distances from the point to the line, the sum of those, the squares, the sum of the squares of those distances is minimized. Okay, and the theory behind it is our dependent, our independent variables, what we know. We can measure that, we have access to that. We don't know the independent variable. So all the variabilities in the independent variable, or excuse me, all the variabilities in the dependent variable, which is um, recognized by the vertical coordinate. So that's where we're measuring the error, is only in the vertical coordinate. If I switch the roles of the independent and dependent variables, well, I could either think of that as flipping my graph over the line y equals x, taking the inverse, or I could look at it as minimizing the sum of the horizontal distances from the points to the line, the squares of the horizontal distances from the point to the line. And because that's a different idea, you're going to end up getting a different result. Now, when you go to do a computation, the results don't end up being too much different um, because it's still a line of best fit and it's still a good fit for your data. In particular, you'll find that uh, the least squares line of best fit will always pass through the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So the, the coordinate that has um, the average x and the average y. And if you switch the roles of x and y when you're making that, that doesn't, when you're drawing the line that does not affect what the average x and the average y is. It only affects how they play into creating the line. You're actually going to prove that. That's one of your homework assignments for the least squares home or that's one of your homework problems for the least squares homework assignments that the least squares line does indeed pass through this point. Um, but that's a way to see that the lines aren't too far apart, at least in the middle of your data set. But for this example, you can really see from the numbers that these are different lines, and that if you that it really does matter which variable you think of as the dependent variable and which one you think is the independent variable.